Welcome, everybody. So my name is Sue Grinnell, and I'm with the Population Health Innovation Lab, and this is our mission statement. And so we really are about designing, catalyzing, and accelerating innovative approaches that advance health, well-being, and equity. So welcome. And today, so um, I'm speaking fast because we have 30 minutes, and we really want to get to the to the the bulk of our meeting, which is you interchanging um, with each other. Our intention, so just in full transparency, this is a pilot, right? This is our second one that we're doing and we're, we have seen a need. And so we're trying out this concept and we really just see the importance of bringing people together who are doing this very hard work of supporting multi-sector collaboratives to come together to share challenges, <laughs> brainstorm ideas, rim, share resources, or even explore a possible project, right? And so welcome. And um, kind of the flow of this is we will share a concept of the day. And today's concept is sensing the system. So that is a practice that we're going to talk more about. And a resource of the day, which is um, for today is World Cafe. It is one way that you can actually sense the system, but it is not the only way. And then we will close. So we just wanted to call us back to the first session. Um, we hosted this about six weeks ago. And again, we're introducing kind of a concept. Last time we talked a lot about shared intent and the real importance of helping your group and your work to try to all get on kind of the same page about what you're all trying to do together. Um, and one of the resources that we shared on that session was more about a check-in and check-out as a practice to continuously build in this shared intention and this opportunity for you all to be on the same page about kind of what you're experiencing and hearing and learning um, as you all are in space together. Next slide, Sue. So today, our concept is going to be sensing the system. Um, so I know it sounds a little bit basic. This is not intended to play down your knowledge. I know many of you are very well experienced in this area. However, we want to chat a little bit about a system before we jump into why we're even sensing it. Um, so a system really is a set of connected things, and it's forming this complex whole with a specific purpose. And there's lots of different examples of a system. So you might have something as huge as a solar system that's coming together based on gravity. Um, and we live in this solar system and it is performing this function. We have the benefit of being able to live because of it. Another example of a system is something like the metro system, um, the purpose of helping people to get from one place to another. There's a whole set of systems and the other things connected in here, um, trains and stops and all these different things that allow that system to function. And then we have things even as microscopic inside us, which are still enormously huge and complex, <laughs> like the circulatory system to allow you to breathe and to function and your organs to survive. Um, these are all different systems. And we all work in different systems. You might be working in healthcare. You might be working in transportation. You might be working in, in education. Mm -hmm. And even in your community at large, you're all functioning as a system. There are many different things working together to uphold the status quo of what is going on and what your community looks like. Next slide. So why exactly is it that a multi-sector collaborative might want to consider sensing that system? Well, by nature, as we talked about, when you're working in a multi-sector collaborative, you're bringing lots of different folks together with different perspectives, knowledge, experiences, expertise. And this is really important because any given community, as I mentioned, is part of upholding what is going on in um, their local area. And so often it's easy for us to look at a problem and to try to think up of a solution or some way to intervene on that problem and oftentimes um, we look at trying to address what's on the surface and we forget that there's all these other things underneath it that are causing the perpetuation of the surface. Um, and so what we like to talk about is that sensing the system allows us to get much lower and deeper within the actual issue. It allows us to really unearth those potential root causes, like the why behind the why behind the why of all the things that are occurring. <laughs> It allows you to really get a more full picture of what this story is. 
And it really allows you to then better identify leverage points that are going to be more effective at helping you to make the change that you're desiring to make in the community. And sometimes, honestly, that change may look different than what you're originally thinking it should, based on sensing the system and the needs that you find and the challenges that are unearthed. Um, just as kind of an example of some folks that we've worked with, um, we have worked with communities that maybe wanted to address the rates of increasing domestic violence or homicide amongst a specific population in their community. And when they go in and they really think at the systems level about what is it that they need to do? They might unearth like cultural challenges within um, their community group that really are inhibiting certain things or causing a perpetuation of certain harm. Um, <clears throat> they might unearth more issues related to um, just systemic violence and racism that are perpetuating things and causing an increase in patterns. Um, and then other things just as such as lack of resources or education or different things around um, this issue that they're trying to address. And all of those different things are leverage points that they can use to say, how can we help address and affect change in this system? Um, so this is just a little bit more about system and why you might want to start sensing it. I'm going to turn it over to Sue to share with us a little bit more about mm -hmm. how we can do this. Right. Um, so there's many ways that you can actually go out and better understand the system. This is a list of some of them, some practices, not all. And I just want to call your attention to the very first one. I think you may not think listening and or mindfulness is a practice that can be useful, but really um, understanding and having the ability to listen to what's being said and um, I think mindfulness is an incredible practice that allows you to be present so that you can actually hear what people are saying. Um, this quote that is here is actually from work that we've done um, in the state of California. And um, what was fascinating, just to be brief, right, is the group actually thought the problem was X and really encouraged them and provided support on going out and doing learning conversations, learning journeys, like just talking to people. What they learned was a bulk of the people in the community um, of which they were most concerned about had been exposed to drugs, alcohol, lots of different um, factors at a very, very young age. As a result of that, what happened is they changed the, the way that they were going to intervene. So it was all downstream as, a pro, as, a, as opposed to um, where they changed to having more of a life course approach, starting at the beginning, as well as making sure that they were looking at what was needed um, you know, downstream. So these are just examples. Um, some of you have probably done some of these. Today, the resource and the practice that we wanna share with you is something known as World Cafe. And <clears throat> excuse me, it's a structured conversation in which typically you do three rounds um, of doing that. And it's focused on a theme or a topic of which um, you care about and you wanna learn more. Um, it's really effective, right, when you have people from the community, people that you're working with. There's a lot of wisdom, right, in the, in the groups that you're working with. It's very flexible. It's very adaptable. These are just some of the practices. If anybody is interested, we actually have this as a poster that you're, you know, more than welcome. We could share with you um, that just has the practices of, of how you would do um, World Cafe. So typically um, when you do a world cafe, there are three rounds and there are tables that are set up and there's any, you know, usually about three to four people at a table. And the questions are just get progressively like what I would call deeper. So this is just an example of um, three rounds of questions, right? So who are you? What systems are at play? So it's kind of a get to know you because maybe you're with people that you don't know. And then um, a particular question, right, related to communities, what's, what's going on in the community? What would community members share as the most concerning issues related to your work of focus? And what's an actionable idea? So I think you really wanna move towards what are you hearing, right? What are you hearing from the systems and the people who are experiencing the systems and how might we move forward? And then moving to a practice called harvest where you're actually gleaning all of that wisdom in the room. Okay, 
that was quick. That was a lot. <laughs> so today, what we're going to invite you all to do is be in a little bit more connection with one another. Um, last time we had just kind of some open conversation with one another at large. Again, this is our pilot, so we're testing. And you all are calling us uh, to this space and saying, we really want to get to know other people more. And so I am going to invite you to step boldly and courageously into this opportunity of being in a breakout room. I promise it will not be for long um, and there will be at least three folks per room. Um, so hopefully there's no um, too many awkward silences. But what we want you all to do is kind of a lightning round of a question that you might be able to do in something like a World Cafe. As Sue mentioned, normally there's three rounds when you bring people together, um, and each of these rounds might last 40 to 50 minutes um, of real digging into conversation with those around you, trying to really understand the system, and progressively getting deeper and deeper into conversation. Given the 30 minutes, we're not going to be able to do that, <laughs> um, but we are going to have one round of conversation with the intention of helping you all to connect with one another a little bit more on what methods you are using to increase understanding of the systems uh, at work in your community and in your work um, and how they are experienced in your community. So I'm going to encourage you all to be thinking about that. As I mentioned, we are going to put you into breakout rooms. Um, so in just a moment, we'll be opening those rooms. Back, everyone. Yes. yes. I know that yes. was a lightning round getting into a room. Um, and hopefully you met some new folks and were able to make a couple connections. Hopefully mm -hmm. able to chat a little bit about some methods perhaps that you use locally. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Sue to do some reflecting, which is one of the practices we Great. Have. Great, thanks so much. So I think um, earlier I used the term harvest, right? So this is what we call harvest and it's really gleaning from you all what wisdom and what um, fun things that you discussed and talked about. So I just love to hear um, if anyone um, learned about a new tool or a new practice, something that they um, learned about in, in your breakout. And I'm not afraid to call on people too. I can jump. Liz, 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 yes, yeah. welcome. Wasn't necessarily uh, something new, but just a reminder about um, the language that we're using and making sure that it's understandable by those. And we're not we're cutting out the jargon, but not necessarily dumbing it down. Just using different terminology. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Thank you. It's always a good reminder. And Holly, did you, thank you for, I know Lake like, County very well. Do you have anything to share about your work? Um, well, we didn't really talk about tools that we use. We just introduced each other. Um, I mean, we're, I, we're at the behavioral health. So we have mental health services and substance use services. And we take on all the, um, referrals from probation, court, CWS. And then we have quite a bit of actual self-referred clients here and we offer outpatient treatment. So busy work. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Lori, what about you? I would love to have the slides. Great. <laughs> Well, I mean, we talked about how the world, we've all got had some experience with the cafe approach, but it's a really good tool and yet you would be, you know, good to bring that into working with, you know, multi-sector collaborative work, particularly with community members. And just, I was thinking that, you know, we were talking about how um, maybe they don't even know they're a part of a system always. So, um, yeah, uh. just the whole thing of, yeah, defining our terms and um, just meeting them where they're at. Yeah, yes, that's great. Yes, you're, I think what we are going to do is um, create a little spot on our webpage to post slides and, and make this available. So more than welcome, welcome to those. Um, and then Liz, we were talking about going to where the people are, right, especially for focus groups or listening sessions. 
And Alicia, I think you had your hand raised. I don't know if you wanted to share something. Oh, yay. I hope that I pronounced your name correctly. Apologies. Yeah, if I didn't Alicia. Alicia. Alicia, thank you. <laughs> Spelled different. Uh, we, we did um, on our group have done, again, World Cafe roundtable discussions, a lot of that. And I think one of the things we were mentioning is especially those that are in more of the public health space, we do a lot of the assessment, community assessments and roundtables, and it's getting that next step of the actional piece that we've been struggling with. It's like, mm. I have tons of notes of gaps and barriers and ideas, but then it's like, how do we actually get sectors to work together on something? Um, and so one thing that we're doing is trying to, we've, we've done it about, you know, various ways of, of this type of exercise. And so we want to do one pagers for each sector in their own language and their own values and their own goals and then have what are two to three action steps that you, this sector can do that relates to the mission of get healthy utah um and and so that's something we want to work on this next year as kind of a next step but i'd definitely love to hear other thoughts on getting to that next step or maybe that's on a next call that we can do yeah that's awesome that's awesome. i love that thank you mm -hmm. One practice that it makes me think of that I am very fond of is like graphic recordings. We did some work in Napa where we um, gleaned lots of different information and we used a graphic recorder and gave them the notes and they created visuals that we went and then made available to the community because a visual oftentimes is a really health, it, it's a harvest method, but it also helps you to see are we hearing what you're saying right? You know, is there anything else? And then using opportunities for, for feedback. So, great. Yes, thank you all so much for sharing um, and for spending a little time connecting with colleagues today. We are at the actual, again, this is a lightning round. We are going to launch a poll real quick um, in Zoom. If you wouldn't mind trying to spend just a minute or so answering some of these questions, it will help us move forward with future events. Um, we are always open to feedback. If you have that separately by email, or just want to chat with one of us. Um, we are trying to, again, make this relevant for you all and your work. Um, also not make it too heavy of a burden of time or commitment. Um, so thank you for jumping in. We really appreciate it. And I will just share one other slide as we jump out. Um, our next fill up your cup sessions are going to be here in October and November and December. So we have a few more coming up for the rest of this year. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all at a future event. Thank you so much for your time. If Thank you, you for coming. Around, you're welcome to chat with us afterwards. Yes. This is the official end. <laughs> It's amazing how fast 30 minutes goes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. How are you, Lori? How is it going? Wait, you're- Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's good. You know, things have changed as far as our um, accountable experience for health. Yeah. Is, so, but- but it's all it's all good. It's just a big shift, and um, but this is a good reminder about you know some of the things that we've learned in the past that can still be you know brought to bear in, right. in the role that we now have. So that's right. Yeah.